Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show to you how to prove that the summation of the PMF of the negative binomial distribution is equal to 1. In symbol, we will prove this. The PMF in here is for the negative binomial distribution. It will be summed within the support of its random variable, and we will prove it to be equal to 1. Now for the PMF of the negative binomial distribution, we have two forms. We have this one and this one. We will do the proof for both of them. But since in this form, it is simply support, we will start the proof for this form. Then we will do the proof for this one afterwards. So now let's start our proof with this form. In our proof, we will determine the value of the payment at its support and we should prove that it is equal to 1. We will prove based on this payment first. So let us substitute it in here. So it is equal to summation of that payment And for its support, its support is from 0 to infinity. So we have here x equals to 0 until infinity. Now this p raised to r has no x in it. So it is unaffected by this summation. So we can consider this as a constant. And we can move it outside of this summation. So now it is equal to so we have now t raised to r outside of this emission. Now to simplify the resulting expression, we will use the negative binomial theorem, which has the following expression. Now if we want a proof for this theorem, I have provided it in a separate video, and the link is shown in the description below, so you may check it out. Now for these two terms in here, we can combine negative 1 and z, to form negative z raised to k. Now to use this theorem, we need to transform this into a form similar to this using transformations. So we let x to be equal to k, r to be equal to n, and 1 minus p to be equal to negative z. Then our expression will become We have a constant p raised to r. We will not transform this term. Then summation, the r will become n. The x will become k. So we have here plus k minus 1, then k. Then 1 minus p is negative z. Then raised to x, which is this k, so we raise it to k. Then the x in here has a one-to-one -one relationship to k and is monotonically increasing. So we will just change x to k. So we have here from k equals to 0 until infinity. Then if you compare this, including this, with this, they are the same. So this is equal to this expression. So now, we still have this, then times this. Now let us put back our original variables for z. From this expression, we can multiply both sides by negative 1 and then exchange the sides. So we have here z equals to negative 1 minus p. Then it is equal to Distributing the negative sign inside the parenthesis, we have negative 1, then minus, minus is plus. So we have plus p. So now it is equal to, we still have p raised to r, then 1 plus, then for z, it is negative 1 plus p, then n is r, so we have here negative r, then we can cancel out 1 and negative 1. So it is equal to 
P raised to R, then P raised to negative R. Then from algebra, we can combine both P. So we have P raised to R minus R. And R minus R is 0, so it is equal to P raised to 0. And P raised to 0 is 1, so it is equal to 1. So our summation of PMF with its support is 1. So this completes our proof for the first PMF form. Let us now do the proof for the second form. Going back in here, we've done the proof for this PMF form. Let us now do the proof for this second form. Let me copy this and paste in here. This is the PMF for the second form. So what we will do next is to find again the summation of PMF we do need support for that second form. Our random variable now is y rather than x. Then let us substitute now this PMF in here. So we have the support for the random variable is now from r to infinity. So we have here from y equals to r until y is infinity. Then same as before, this p raised to r has no y in it, so we can consider it as a constant and will be it outside of the summation in here. So, then to simplify this, we will use the binomial theorem again. Let's go to that theorem. This is the binomial theorem. Let us copy it. But we will now replace this by this. So let us copy that and paste in here. Then to use this binomial theorem, we need to make this expression be similar to this expression by doing transformations. So let's do the transformation. Let y equals to n plus k. This is for the random variable y. We have r equals to n, same as before. Then same as before, 1 minus p is negative z. Let's substitute this now. We have p raised to r in here. We will transform it later. We have here y, which will become m plus k. Then we have here minus 1. Then we have here r, which will become n. Then we have here minus 1. Then for 1 minus p, it will become negative z. Then it is raised to 1 minus r, and y is n plus k. Then we have negative r, where r is n. Then for this y in here, we need it to become k. From this transformation, k is equal to y minus n. So we have here k is equal to y minus n. Then when y is r, from here, k is r minus n. Then r is n, so it is equal to n minus n. But n minus n is 0, so k will be 0. So when y equals to r, k equals to 0. Then when y is infinity, then k is infinity minus n, which is still infinity. So k is infinity when y is infinity. Then from here, n minus n is 0. So we can cancel them out. Now, if we compare this one with this one, they are not the same. Because we have k in here and we have n minus 1 in here. But if we evaluate this combination expression, We have a formula for binomial expression, which you can find in many textbooks. For the m factorial in here, 
it is the factorial of this. Then over, then for this, it is the factorial of this, minus this, so n plus k minus 1, minus k is equal to, we can cancel out this and this, so we have n minus 1. So we have here n minus 1. We have here a factorial. Then for this, it is k factorial. Then for this combination expression, or f factorial, it is the factorial of this. Then over, then for this, it is the factorial of this, minus this, n plus k minus 1, minus n minus 1, is equal to n plus k minus 1. Then we have minus n, then we have minus, and minus 1, which is plus 1. Then we have n and minus n, so we can cancel them out. Then we have minus 1 and plus 1, so we can also cancel them out. So what remains in here is this k. So we have here k. Then we have factorial. Then for this y factorial, it is n minus 1 factorial. So we have here n minus 1 factorial. Then if we compare this and this, they are the same, except on the arrangements of their denominators, which have the same value. So both of these expressions have the same value. So in here, these two expressions have the same value. Then if you compare both of them, including the summation and the last term in the summation, they have the same value. So the expression in here inside this rectangular box should be equal to this expression. So our summation of payment now is this p raised to r. times this. Then what is this p raised to r? We haven't transformed this one yet, so let us transform this now. In here, in this transformation expression, we can put minus p to the right and the dip z to the left. So we have 1 plus z is equal to p. So p is 1 plus c. Then going back in here now, it is equal to 1 plus z for p, then for r, it is n. So we have here n, and we have this, 1 plus z raised to negative n. And we have common 1 plus z in here. Then there is 2. n minus n, which is 0. So we have here 0. Then 1 plus z raised to 0 is 1. So we have here 1. So now we have proved that this emission of the PMF within its support is 1 and it's for the second form of the PMF. So we have now proved that the summation of PMFs of the negative binomial distribution is equal to 1 for the two PMF forms, which is our objective in this video. 
So this ends this video. And I hope you learned a lot from it. So see you in the next video.